Have you gone no contact with a narcissist or with a toxic person? If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community, and your guide in the 45-day Clarity Challenge that you can access at claritychallenge.net. If you like what you see here about narcissism, narcissistic abuse, some of my story, then go ahead and subscribe. We have videos that drop every single day to try to help people understand the crazy making called narcissistic abuse. Well, has there been a time that you've been with someone and you've decided, I'm going to go no contact, but the problem was you couldn't, or the problem might have been you ended up going back. You ended up going back to someone that you knew, this is a toxic relationship. I probably shouldn't do this, but uh, I still want to, and you find yourself back in a toxic relationship. Oftentimes, we dive into this aspect of no contact, and I want to break it down for you in three different ways of why you go back, of what happens when you go back, and what to do about it. Well, why do you go back? Okay, That's sometimes people's question to themselves when they arrive back in a toxic relationship, and they're like, I don't even know why I'm here. Like, I know mentally that this is a bad relationship. I know that this is not a healthy thing. The anxiety, the stress, the frustration, the reactive abuse that I exude, like all these different things that happen when I'm with this person, why would I want to go back? But they still feel this like pull. They still feel this peace that's pulling them back to this other person. And a lot of times that's because of addiction. Now, I'm not talking about like normal addiction of like, hey, you're addicted to drugs or alcohol or something like that, but an addiction to another person, an addiction that pulls you to that person. Oftentimes, this addiction is not a drug that someone is addicted to, but a person where they're addicted to the possibility in the maybe that something might actually happen, transpire, or become better than what it actually is. The hard part is when you're away from this person, you start to doubt your resolve in that decision to leave. You start to doubt what's actually happening, and oftentimes you start doing something that we call pain shopping. Now, when we're talking about pain shopping, pain shopping oftentimes is where you're not feeling a certain way. Maybe there's a connection piece that you're missing, and so as a result, when you're away from this person, you're like, I need to go back. I have to be able to get with them to have this interaction, to have this moment, to have this feeling. Sometimes it's the opposite and you don't have any feelings. You're like, I don't know what's going on. I'm completely numb. I'm completely like void of like feelings. What do I need to do? And as a result, you go back because you know that there's feelings there. The majority of time though, when people start doing pain shopping, they're only trying to soothe a wound that's inside themselves. And they're not really going through proper categories to learn how to heal, how to grow, and how to change. Well, a lot of times the reason why people go back, I mentioned, was the possibility that maybe the addiction piece, and then they start pain shopping to feel better about themselves. A big part of people going back is because of hope. A lot of people view narcissists as being like, maybe there is a hope for them to change, understand, get aware, actually value me, et cetera, et cetera. That's why a lot of times I don't talk about hope on my channel as a way to provide hope for people in narcissistic relationships. Because what happens is someone then latches onto one thing I say and they're like, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to be with this person and they're going to change. They're going to turn out just like him, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, no, if you don't see consistency in the change aspect, consistency and honesty in vulnerability, you're living a pipe dream and there is no hope and you need to work on yourself and stop living thinking that someone else is going to change. Hope is a powerful piece that locks people in to a toxic relationship. Thinking of the potential of this person, of how they have so much potential or how much your relationship has so much potential is another piece that ties people to that person. And cognitive dissonance is another piece that ties it in very well that makes you confused of like, what do I actually believe? 
Well, see, when we're talking about cognitive dissonance, we're talking about the idea of holding two opposing thoughts. Of what do I believe, this person's words or this person's actions? Do I make this decision and have them get mad at me? Or do I make this decision and have them give me the silent treatment? Which do I actually do? And when people stay in that limbo, in that middle, and like, uh, I don't know which way I'm supposed to go, that produces mental, emotional, and oftentimes physical responses because you're in that anxious and high anxiety, stress level state for a period of time that's damaging to you and is damaging to your body. The hard part with being with a narcissist is that's normally status quo of where you're always going to be. That type of idea and feeling oftentimes will trap people in just a, a stasis mode of like, I don't know which way to go. And as a result, they just stay instead of confronting it or instead of getting out. This all produces a trauma bond. And the trauma bond is not fixed by time, by distance, or sometimes even by no contact. A lot of times people think like, well, if I just get away, if I just, you know, disappear, it, it, time will heal all wounds. And no, it's not true. Because a lot of people get away and they are still trapped in their mind and in their heart, even though they might physically be away from that abusive person. Maybe you got away and you got hoovered back in. Right now, as this video is uh, being produced, it's the holiday season. I've talked about holiday hoovers, of coming back into your life, being like, it's the most wonderful time to hoover you back in. And a lot of times, people get sucked back in really easily. Okay, well, what happens when no contact is lost? Okay, so why do we go back? And then what happens when no contact is lost? What happens when we go back to a narcissist? Well, the majority of time, when you come back into a narcissist life and you're like, hey, I'm back, I'm committed, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this again, or whatever it might be, whatever that looks like, okay? You're no contact, you walk back into the life. A lot of times a narcissist will view that as permission of all the things that they've done to you, being like, hey, that is okay that it happened. And as a result, they're like, wait a second, now all the stuff I did, it's okay for me to do, and it becomes a new baseline of abuse. Imagine that that person was mean or did so many things up to a certain level and then stopped. Well, you go no contact, you come back. That level that was once there is now the new baseline, and now it continues to go up from there. Oftentimes, when you come back to a toxic relationship, it accelerates, it gets worse, it gets thrown in your face, it gets more violent. There's a lot of different pieces that happen right then and there. Big aspect of when you come back and give forgiveness or different aspects of that, it appears to the narcissist as being victory over your boundaries. It's the aspect that like, I broke through that boundary, I got you back. I'm still in control. Now, you might be thinking, what happens with going no contact? Like, what, what about I just broke it? Like, I feel awful about myself. Like, what's going on? First off, I want you to understand it's okay. So many people break no contact, and then they spend so much time just beating themselves up, tearing themselves down. So number one, I want you to understand it's okay. You can work through this. Get back to the basics, get back to grounding yourself, say, hey, this is what I need to do to make sure that I am okay and that I am safe. The second thing is when you break no contact, it's not like you're starting all over. Now, if we're counting up, it is starting over of like, okay, let me count. Now I'm day one. But all the work that you've done can still be compounded on if you go back to no contact. So many times people think, almost like a video game, like if you wreck the car, you get placed back at the start line and you have to start all over again. Going no contact with a narcissist and breaking that no contact is not getting put back at the start line, but is getting a flat tire and you have to get out, change it, and then get back on the road doing the same things you were doing before of staying no contact. The problem is, is it messes with your mind so much, a lot of times you will sacrifice time, money, and energy and go back to the start line thinking I'm the worst person ever when in reality, you just need to continue the course. Hopefully that helps in at least understanding that. When you decide, hey, I'm going to go back to a narcissist that hasn't changed, that you haven't seen the difference, or you're confused, maybe you have, 
You need to understand when you break that no contact, you're signing up for all of the things that happened in the past and saying, I'm ready and I'm willing for this to happen to me again. That's it. No contact means you're going no access to you on everything. Block, ghost, move, hide, change jobs, states, change numbers, whatever you have to do to be able to get free from that toxicity. Last but not least, if you're having trouble going back, if you're stuck in that trauma bond, you're like, I don't know how to be able to work through this. I don't know how to be able to get through this. I want to invite you into the 45-day clarity challenge to break free. This is a purposeful day-by-day guide to help you step-by-step process to break the bonds inside your mind, to break the trauma bonds, the stories that you believe, to reduce the triggers that you have, and give you a guide to success and to healing. We've got it open for a couple more days before it fills up going into 2023 to be able to engage in your healing. Make 2023 a new year for a new you. We've got a list of things inside the 45-day challenge to be able to have you go through a checklist of, hey, make sure they're blocked on all these different things. Some things that you might not even think about, some things that you might know, or some things you might be like, I didn't even know you could block on that. Because the goal is we got to get you blocked on everything so that we can focus on your growth, your healing, and your change. 